How's it going everyone? It's Javi from Weather Sponge 5000 and of course in this video we're going to talk about Tropical Storm Lee and take a look at the current water vapor energy right now. It's looking very concerning because this is a newly formed tropical storm. Its wind speed is hovering around 45 miles per hour and looking at the water vapor energy it looks as healthy as a uh, early um, as a newborn tropical storm could get. We do have plenty of convection going on a uh, strong amount of rotation for um, what is considered right now a weak tropical storm of course that isn't going to keep up this will likely become a major hurricane in the more long-term future and we do see a nice outflow going on surrounding the convection which shows that this storm is very well ventilated for more air to rise because of course in the upper levels the air um, for a tropical cyclone to continue to intensify rapidly it's going to need the air in the upper levels to move out to allow the surface level air to move up to enhance the convective activity and lower the pressure and that's exactly what we're seeing right here so expect a gradual intensification before rapidly intensifying once it's able to um, escape this pocket of dry air you see just so west of it and another small pocket of dry air just to the east of this storm system because there's a small upper level low located just to the north of it that should help um, destabilize the atmosphere ju um, just enough for this to eventually rapidly intensify once this moves just to the north most likely of the lesser antilles now let's get straight into things by taking a look at the latest run of the european model when it comes to relative humidity in the mid levels and we do see this where um tropical storm lee is located right now and we do see that um initially the storm will begin slightly lopsided where much of the moisture will be located on the western half of this storm system because like i said there is a decent amount of dry air just to the east of this storm so that will prevent it from at least rapidly intensifying early on but eventually that will change because like i just said this upper level low will help destabilize the atmosphere and that's when we should see rapid intensification where we see the pressure drop down to 974 millibars at least based on what the european models forecast is saying um as early as saturday so that's borderline a category three potentially even stronger than that by the time we approach saturday time frame and moving even uh, more forward into the forecast we can see the pressure drop down to as low as 949 millibars this is easily a category 4 hurricane borderline a category 5 depending on how large a wind field of this storm system will be um this is right around sunday and it's gonna be and the european model at least for right now expects the storm to be just far enough north of the lesser antilles to avoid much of the of any direct impact um which is certainly good news for puerto rico and the lesser antilles because of course in the earlier model runs they were leaning a little bit more towards bringing the storm system further southwards where you would definitely experience more significant impacts in that scenario but now the the european model has shifted its forecast a little bit further northward and so as a gfs model i will still say that most likely Puerto Rico and the Lesser Antilles will avoid direct impacts as I do expect as the computer models have been in high agreement that this will move just to the north there couldn't still the possibility does still exist that this could move southward and bring um potentially direct impacts but I'll say that scenario is less likely at this point this should move just to the north and the biggest threat should primarily be rough surf and rip currents right over the especially the um right around the northern coast of Puerto Rico and the Leeward Islands where you should experience the worst of the waves because of course you could have a borderline category 5 just the north of you guys the pressure drops even more down 938 millibars and even down to 928 millibars by the time we approach Wednesday which I'll, I'll say is category 5 strength right now the National Hurricane Center's forecast is forecasting a category 4 at its max intensity however I do believe the National Hurricane Center is definitely underestimating what um um what um based on this storm as I do expect that this should reach category 5 status because the computer model has been just very very aggressive with develop with rapidly intensifying this storm once this moves just the north of the Caribbean and then you're probably of course wondering the big question for many uh, of you is how about beyond the point where it moves from the Caribbean could it impact the United States well taking a look at the latest run of the European model what is slightly concerning is that we do see the European model take a slight westward curve that brings it a little bit closer 
to um, the northeast. And the reason why is because there is actually going to be a pretty strong Bermuda um, ridge that's going to be located a lot further northward than it usually is. And that could spell trouble because that will um, shift the wind direction from more of a easterly direction right over the western Atlantic to where this could potentially move uncomfortably close to the United States if this ridge ends up being strong enough. However, the current consensus from both the main computer models is that there should be a trough that will move in right around the same time period by um, um, as when this storm system should be right around the latitude of the Carolinas. And hopefully that this trough will be at least strong enough and the dip in the jet stream will be pronounced enough to shift the wind direction to where it, it'll steer it further west uh, to where it'll shift the wind direction from more of a westerly direction and steer it out to sea but uh, this still has yet to be seen this is very um this is very much in the long-term future and when it comes to what the gfs model is stating the gfs model is while it isn't expecting direct impacts right up along the northeast coast, it certainly is at, at the very least bringing some impacts, especially to New England, where this does come close enough to bring potentially stronger winds as well as heavier rainfall right around New England. And the combination of this trough and this um, what would likely become major hurricane Lee would enhance the rainfall right up along the New England coast. And there's still that possibility that if this ridge ends up being strong enough, we could see a track even further westward to where it brings direct impacts, but that still has yet to be seen. Let me show you guys the 500 millibar height anomaly from the GFS model. So here's the Bermuda Azores um, ridge that I'm talking to you guys about. And if this ridge ends up being a little bit stronger and this chop ends up being weaker than anticipated, then we could see a track further westward and could potentially bring direct impacts in the northeast. However, this forecast is far from uncertain, so definitely don't pay panic just yet along the east coast there's still a lot of time to iron out the forecast and plus typically at least when it comes to how tropical cyclones in this scenario have fared in the past over the past let's say several decades Typically, most tropical cyclones would move um, move out to sea and away from the northeast. It's very rare for any tropical cyclone to take a direct um, to take a track further westward to directly impact the northeast. Mainly because most of the time, the westerly winds are just too strong for a tropical cyclone to make it all the way to the northeast without being steered away out to sea. And it's also rare to have a ridge this far up north and be strong enough to steer it. Um, to, t to force a, the storm system to take a left hook. So, um, historically speaking, the odds would be in Northeast favor, but based on what we're seeing from the computer models with this ridge, it's at least not something you see every day. So anything could happen in a scenario like this, despite how, um, despite how um, what tropical cyclones have done in the past. So we're definitely going to pay close attention to how much this ridge builds over the next several days. And it's going to take a while before we can say for certain whether this will go out to sea, bring maybe some impacts in the northeast or potentially direct impacts. And if this were to bring direct impacts, that would certainly be an extreme extremely um concerning scenario because if we were again to take a look at the millibar pressure of this storm 961 millibars if this were somehow to take a westward hook towards the northeast that would bring potentially catastrophic impacts that's a major hurricane impacting the northeast coast which hasn't happened in I, I don't even know it's been decades since we last saw a major hurricane impact the northeast we did have hurricane sandy which did bring similar impacts like major hurricane would thanks to the sheer size of sandy but when it comes to actual uh, uh when it comes to an actual tropical cyclone with wind speed that's equivalent to a major hurricane status impacting northeast it's very rare for that to happen and we see the pressure doesn't even drop that much as it moves her northward where temperatures become colder and about whether or not this impacts the northeast coast or not I do believe that it's be, it could be um, becoming more likely that at least the southern portion of Canada or at least the coastal portion of Canada 
could experience more impacts because it's going to be very difficult um, if it, this storm were to be at this point to completely avoid the coast of Canada because of course the eastern half um, the east coast of Canada pops out into the Atlantic um, very far to the east so it's going to be very difficult for this to potentially avoid um, Hurricane Lee even if this somehow misses the northeast coast so um, Canada, Dudley, you need to be even more aware of this because there could be an enhanced risk you'll experience impacts. And then um, for Bermuda as well, um, you definitely need to be aware of this because even if this moves just to the west, this could still bring impacts to you guys when it comes to heavy rainfall and rough surf. So definitely keep that in mind. But point is, United States, still way too early to panic at all. But at least just keep tabs on this because if this ridge ends up being uh, becoming a little bit too strong, then we could potentially see a worst case scenario. But definitely at least stay tuned for more updates over the next several days. However, when it comes to a more short-term future, what I could say for certain is that this likely... this is almost guaranteed there's gonna be a major hurricane if we were to take a look um like like i'm showing you guys right now the um more, the atmosphere will destabilize right over the trajectory of where the storm would go which means that there won't be any dry um or stable air to disrupt this storm from intensifying the sea surf tethers are very warm right um just to the north of the caribbean and taking a look at the upper level winds they're going to promote tropical cyclone development even more by having a nice outflow there is a strong upper level high located just above the surface level low so that will allow just enough of a nice outflow for this to continue to intensify so that's what i could say for certain um the lesser antilles and puerto rico at least be aware of where this storm will go I'll, I'll still say that most likely it'll move just the north of you guys not bring any direct impacts but this could still bring an enhanced risk of rain showers as well as maybe gustier winds along the northern coast and of course rough surf and rip currents and definitely don't underestimate rip currents because unfortunately rip currents are one of the leading causes of weather related um deaths worldwide and it's definitely unfortunate because it's completely avoidable just don't go into the water if you're advised to because the rip currents will likely be very strong whether this directly impacts the caribbean or not and even for the united states even um even if this were to stay well out to sea of the east coast you likely still will experience a high rip current risk and rough surf along the coast so definitely make sure to stay out the water um as we approach next week so here are what the ensemble members are stating for both of the two most reliable computer models so at least the good news is is that at least for right now both of uh, the ensemble members do agree that this should stay away from the east coast where we have both the european model and the gfs model agreeing that this should stay at least just enough offshore but this is very much in the long-term future and i still wouldn't rule out that possibility at all that this could shift a little bit further westward just make sure to keep tabs on this um and for the eastern um coast of canada definitely watch out for this especially because i do believe that it's almost becoming increasingly likely for um the coastal portion of canada that you will at least experience impacts from this and more likely direct impacts since you since eastern canada pops out um out very much towards the east um over the atlantic and we also see majority of the ensemble members do agree that this will reach major hurricane status and i'm expecting a category five to um to develop just to the north of the caribbean island so definitely be aware of that here's what the model intensity guidance is stating when it comes to charcoal storm lee majority of them do take it to category four status which is really saying something because typically the model intensity guidance does underestimate the strength of many um tropical cyclones so it's definitely very likely we could see a category five in our hands as early as this weekend in terms of other tropical disturbances we're keeping an eye on outside of Lee, we also have this tropical disturbance, which is likely to develop. The good news is that it's likely to move a lot further northward, so I'll say it's more likely to potentially move out to sea, but still a little bit too uncertain to say, but I'll keep you guys updated if we see 
any major um, changes with the forecast of this tropical disturbance. And we also have a slight chance of a tropical cyclone developing just off the coast of Europe, a 20% chance where this could at least have an, um, have enough latent heat associated with it to, for this to potentially be considered a subtropical storm. It definitely will have help from instability um, from barrel clinic influences for this to develop so off the coast of europe you definitely need to at least be aware of this for potentially um stronger wind gusts as well as heavier rainfall as this disturbance is actually what um the um it's pretty much the remnants of chop of hurricane franklin which has turned extra tropical but could attain some tropical characteristics again once it's off the european coast so there's still a lot to discuss when it comes to what will likely become Hurricane Lee over the next several days. I'm still a little bit too uncertain to say if this will impact the East Coast. Definitely pay close attention to how the ridging builds just to the north of this storm system. But I'll make sure to keep you guys updated over the next several days. Make sure to stay tuned. At least keep tabs on this along the East Coast. And, be and what I could say for certain is that we will see a major hurricane likely just north of the Caribbean islands as potentially a uh, category five and rip currents you definitely need to expect that along the coast whether this directly impacts the united states or not but that's it for now guys and i thank you guys for watching and make sure to follow my tiktok for more weather related updates and make sure to like this video as well um we want to spread um i want to spread um as much information to as many people as possible um it really helps the channel out so make sure to like it if you do enjoy this video and i hope you guys have a great day